Yellowstone supervolcano new discovery that there is a hot magma plume beneath it and it stretches all the way down to Mexico. So if it stretches all the way down to Mexico, take a radius from that center point here in the caldera to Mexico and make a circle all the way around. It stretches all the way to the coast of the west, the west coast all the way above the U.S.-Canadian border and uh, basically pretty close to the east coast. Uh, that is how huge Yellowstone is. This is on Science Cycles and other articles I'll leave below for you. There's new evidence that Yellowstone's volcanic activity might shed light on the theory of the presence of a magma plume underneath the caldera in the National Park, sitting on Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. The Yellowstone caldera is a complex system, rock formations that sprung after a series of volcanic eruptions, some going back some 630 million years ago. Now, this is a widely accepted theory, although there are some scientists who argue that the National Park sits right on top of a hot spot, resulting uh, investigation conducted by Peter Nelson and Stephen Grant from University of Texas Jackson School of Geosciences, supports the latter theory, and they suggest a massive magma plume under the park surface is what is causing these eruptions. This plume, they say, which is the technical word for a magma foundation, appears to extend as far as Mexico. In a geographic sense, the magma plume is an abnormally uh, existing part of the Earth's core that rises through the mantle and it forms what it, it appears to be a foundation of the hot magma. Their study was published in Nature Geoscience and it reported that the probability of the magma plume under Yellowstone could explain the heat that influences ground activities, of course, such as the geysers, the boiling water, the boiling river. This latest claim debunks earlier explanations that the heat source is a byproduct of lithospheric movements. As we know, Yellowstone supervolcano has over 60% of the world's geysers. 60% are there. And it has over 10,000 uh, 10, hydrothermal areas. Not all of them have been yet uh, explored by the geologists of Yellowstone. Yellowstone, as we know, was just recently established in 2001. Why? I mean, they, obviously, they didn't think it was that uh, significant. And now, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory was established after a BBC documentary on Yellowstone came out at the end of 2000, and the U.S. government was so moved by it, they decided to uh, that it would be better to have a Yellowstone Observatory there, and it was established in 2001. So you can understand that they didn't yet have the chance to map all these hydrothermal areas, and they're finding new ones all the time. For example, the new one in the northwest of Norris Geyser Basin, and that they found through satellite images. But going on to this now, uh, yes, the boiling rivers and the, the boiling river geothermal activity, and the geysers, of course. Uh, they say that uh, it debunks the lithospheric movements causing such huge amounts of uh, uh, water boiling. Now, Nelson and Graham's team gathered se seismic data using EarthScope US Array, that is, of course, uh, satellite images, showing a long, thin, sloping zone that measured about 72 kilometers long, 52 kilometers wide. Because seismic patterns travel slower in this region of the mantle, it's understandable that it can be up to 800 degrees Celsius higher than its surrounding areas. The emerging image revealed 
a 350 kilometer cylinder formation that runs all the way to the California Mexico border. And Yellowstone is not the only one with suspected magma plume. In fact, the volcanic island of Hawaii is home to the chain of active plumes that go all the back millions of years ago. And in the case of Hawaii, plumes are formed when the ocean plates move beneath the land masses in a process called subduction. The rocks could get in the way during the process, then forming the plumes which are fixated on Earth. Michael Poland, who is the scientist at Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, says there are many suspected plumes or hotspots around the Earth. Yellowstone is one of them, but it's a bit more complex. So yes, Michael Poland, the geologist in charge of Yellowstone, says definitely it is a mantle plume. And according to Poland, although the science of plumes seems complex, it has always been there posing itself as a natural geographic occurrence. He says plumes have no impact on our understanding of how Yellowstone works in terms of eruptive cycles, just their driving forces. It doesn't change our perception of volcanic activity at all. This is what Poland explained. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Caldera Chronicles and Monitoring, and these are the earthquakes of the Yellowstone caldera area. This is the, the blue is the border of the park. That's the park limits. It doesn't mean that the supervolcano doesn't uh, extend further than this. This is just the park. And we see that uh, in the past month we've had 82 earthquakes in this area alone that we see in this screen. And uh, it looks like uh, this one was uh, 2.1. And we had this one here on the 15th, 2.4, 6 mile depth. This is uh, 5.3 mile depth. And we had some around the lake, 7.1. And we know that the lake is above the caldera, as you know, and even the breezes, the strong breezes causing waves on the lake could cause earthquakes in the area. And this is one of the things that the geologists are afraid of, that the strong wind over the lake surface could cause uh, earthquakes. That's how very sensitive and tender the magma chamber is. The roof of the magma chamber is huge, and a supervolcano is not, does not act like a regular volcano, which is a lot smaller. It has a bigger magma chamber, a bigger roof, and the earthquakes, even though they're, they could be smaller than regular quakes, moderate quakes can crack the roof of the magma chamber, from what they were telling us. So let's go out. These are 82 quakes the past month. And uh, usually we have a lot of activity in this area here. And we'll take some time for them to plot. As you can see, this one here, this is anything over two and a half now, otherwise it would be too many. This one here was a four a couple of days back, and we noticed that uh, exactly at that area, we see some more here, and exactly, this is again the Yellowstone area. Um, unfortunately, they're mi they mine here in Montana. They have zinc, um, they have uh, sapphire mines, sapphire and precious uh, gems mining. And uh, all this is, of course, the area of Yellowstone. But they tell us that this plume goes all the way down to the Mexico-California border, this thing here, all the way down there. So you can imagine how huge this thing is, how huge this thing is. Um, they had a, a, a rich crest earthquake back in 1999 of a 7.1. What a coincidence, 20 years later, 7.1, July 5th. And uh, the 1999 7.1 earthquake caused the earthquake swarm in Yellowstone supervolcano area a couple of weeks later. So we could, and besides other earthquakes, 
the Denali, Alaska earthquake caused earthquake swarm in Yellowstone, the uh, Haiti earthquake caused an earthquake swarm in Yellowstone, the Chile 8.8 .8 magnitude caused earthquake swarm in Yellowstone, and of course the uh, 1999 Ridgecrest 7.1 earthquake 20 years ago, uh, in, around the same time as we've had these earthquakes here recently, 6.4 on July 4th and 7.1 July 5th. The 1991 1999 caused the earthquake swarm in Yellowstone. So if we see another swarm in Yellowstone, it could be because of these recent earthquakes in Southern California, the Ridge Crest, the Coso Volcanic Field Area. So this is a new one, magnitude 3.7. Uh, we see that they're, you know, they're not that small, the Ridge Crest. Uh, we, we did research into this and we saw that it's on one of the faults that the geologists have not yet mentioned, the Walker Lane Fault, which is locked into the Garland Fault and the San Andreas Fault. The Garland Fault, that's it right there. And the San Andreas, and it sort of locks in, this whole thing is locked in, like a basin, like a, like a, like a in an elongated oval, and it's locked in. All these fault zones are locked in. That's why we have, and this, uh, Walker Lane system pounds into the Cascadia Arc system. It propagates itself north. And that's probably why the July 3rd Vancouver earthquake... Oh, we've ha we have more here. Okay, that's July 5th. But we had the bigger one there was 6.2. Uh, that was July 4th, that was July 1st, 3rd, but anyway, you can see there it is. That one there caused the ridge crest 13 hours later. And that happened again in 2015. They had a 6.2 out here uh, north of Vancouver Island in Canada. And they, 24 hours later, they had a moderate quake, quake in ridge crest. So this area here it has this very long very dangerous fault giving earthquakes here which could be very uh, strong major quakes they are expecting a big one in southern california they are expecting a big one in northern california in the nor northwestern coast and they are expecting around portland a big one so basically all of the west coast they're expecting big earthquakes uh, in the very near future they were saying this back in 2004 they said in the next 30 years we're going to have we're going to have a major earthquake eight something eight magnitude and something. Well, 15 years of that, 30 years has already gone by. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you: the extent of Yellowstone going all the way down here, and that is a huge thing, huge thing. And it seems that we've had an uptick in earthquakes lately worldwide. Uh, if you see the videos before this one, we've had a, an aftershock in Athens, Greece of the 1999 major quake that we had. Just like they had an aftershock, uh, the aftershocks that we're having uh, here in Yellowstone, they say, is from the 7.1 Hebgen Lake, uh, um, I think it was August of 1959 that they had that quake. And uh, they're still having uh, aftershocks now. Decades, decades later. What is this? Oh, that was old. Yeah, that's old. Okay, thank you for your support, and I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. 
Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.